Hey folks, this is Admiral Matt Doody here again of SRS Fleet. Um, just running another, another uh, build video. It's been a been a while since I posted my last one, and there have been some updates in the game since then. Uh, some upgrades of my gear, some changes to my gear, and yeah, I just thought I'd like to, to show you um, the progress. Okay, so skill set since the rebalance is pretty much the same. The only thing I've changed is I've taken away shield mastery there um, because I, I suspected that it might interfere with the immunity lockout that we're now receiving, and I've um, yeah thrown a. A little bit elsewhere, but on the whole, it's it's mainly still the same. Still maxing energy and projectile weapon damage. Um, like I say, a couple of bits in hull restoration. One in hull capacity, which I didn't have in there before. Um, EPS, obviously needed. The improved EPS flow. Impulse expertise. I, I, I'm in a you know a fast little NP escort. Um, three points in there. I think is um, reasonable enough to have. Improved control. Improved drain. Now drains are not as heavy. I'm not seeing as many drain builds out there anymore. Um, although there are still quite a few. But there, that, that helps me um, resist against that a little bit. Events targeting and defensive maneuvering. Um, again, very, very much needed when you, um, defensive, especially when you're in a, a small hull ship. Um, you obviously don't want to be as hit as often and without the immunities um, to save you anymore, or as many immunities to save you anymore. Um, the more misses you get from your enemy targeting you um, it's yeah it it helps um, hull plating both energized and ablative get a bit of damage resistance there still nothing in weapon amplification for the crits or you know the, the crit chance bonus from your weapons or severity um, I don't really see um, I haven't actually tested this for a while. I don't know if it's been fixed or or whether it's still the same. But still, um, I'm putting out quite a quite a decent amount of damage without these in it. And I think the the points that I would use in there would be taken away from my survivability from my engineering skills. So uh, that they're kept there. Obviously, four points in armor pen and shield pen. Um, Again, offensive subsystem tuning, weapons and engines. We need all the speed and pew pew power that we can get our hands on. Obviously, long range targeting sensors to help with the the um, the drop off from the power or the the damage penalty the further you are away from an enemy. Warp core potential. Yeah. Okay. We need all subsystems to be as high as they can. Two points in engineering readiness, one point in scientific readiness. Um, just because we get, you know, the the cycle downs from from other sources, and two points in attack readiness. Specializations are using Intel primary, simply because of the. The flanking bonuses and the extra accuracy bonuses that we get from using this tree, um, the the flanking bonus does does stack with the raider flanking bonus that we get from being in the D4X, and pilot's been relegated down to secondary um, just because you get the extra little bit of turn rate and the also the um, temporary hit points that you get from the pilot tree. Um, still very worthwhile again in a in a small hauled ship. Now 
our duty officers. Um, got two duty officers here to reduce my cannon abilities. So when rapid fire is being activated, each one of these has a 50% chance. You don't need to um, hold a math degree to learn that's going to reduce. Well, have a hundred percent chance to proc and reduce from 25 seconds for cannon rapid fire up to down to 15 seconds. Um, my my cool warfare specialist here. The, the the healing you get from this is it's fantastic. You know, it, I, I can't recommend having this duty officer enough. Um, 20 percent chance when activating an engineering bridge officer. 10% um, of your next 10 sources of outgoing damage are applied as hull healing. Um, again, there are three three types of that duty officer there. There's one little um, when activating science abilities and tactical abilities, and they'll have the same proc, they'll give you the hull healing. Um, con officer there. Now, if you're lucky enough to get one of these from the, the Phoenix packs when they were, when they were out. Um, activating a, a motor power to engines causes recharge on evasive maneuvers. Now th this isn't a chance, this is a complete 100% guarantee. As long as your evasive maneuvers isn't already active and you hit a motor power to engines that will reset the timer for your evasive maneuvers. And you know there's the my call down here for my engineering team which again helps a lot um, especially in a, in a battle engineering team is one of my primary heals and yeah I'm still using Oxidamp some people say it's useless I don't think there's well it, it's a very good it's a very good um, ability for me personally other people might not choose to use it um, but it works for me so that's why it stays there and the duty officer helps give me energy resistance as well as the kinetic resistance that um, the basic bridge officer ability gives. Now over to gear as you can see my cannons are now upgraded to epic as they were ultra rare before I'm using the fleet standard um, the advanced fleet weapons here with the crit D damage 3 mod um, obviously my Terran task force disruptor dual heavy cannons um, goes absolutely fantastic on a disruptor build um, I'm now also using the Norsican torpedo um, it's quite annoying if um, if you're fighting against this um, the 20% chance to hold for 5 seconds when that's in a spread I'm using torpedo spread too and I think yeah that does stack per uh, per torpedo from the spread so it does proc quite often and you can see also you've got the minus 10 damage resistance for 10 seconds which is your standard disruptor proc still using the um, I've not really upgraded the the fleet turret in the back if I was going for a full turret build um, maybe I'd upgrade them all then to, uh, to epic but I'm still undecided whether I want to keep the turret there or um, throw another torpedo in. Now I'm using the full four piece set from the competitive reputation. So I'm using the prevailing innovated deflector array. Now gives you know a bit of a hull cap, a bit of a shield cap bonus. And what's different from the Innovated is this one gives you four, plus, 40, uh, plus 40 Starship Weapon Specialization. Now I know that I said that the skill tree doesn't work or may not work, um, but this, you know, it, it adds a, a, bit, a bit more crunch um, to, to the weapons that I'm using. Um, and to be quite honest, even if the skills did work uh, fully as intended, um, I still probably wouldn't spec into them just because I'm getting quite a bit from this. You get some of, you know, you get that from Tac Team as well. You get a little bit of um, 
weapon specialization from tac team uh, I'm also using the prevailing innovative impulse engines now these <laughs> they these are fantastic if you've ever used these then you know exactly what I'm talking about see right there in the middle prevailing engine overcharge upon activating a firing mode bridge officer you get some immense flight speed and turn rate for five seconds a bit of extra defense and a bit of increased recharge speed on your bridge officer abilities now you do have the, the fortified and the bolstered ones um, again different abilities so one will give you um, the, the same flight speed and turn rate for activating a hull or shield heal and the other ones like a drain hit, um, ability um, will give you the same yeah, flight speed and turn rate again prevailing innovative warp core um, this give you the engine power um, again in a, a little escort like this or raider like this should I say um, you need yeah engine power is never a bad thing now the shield um, I'm not going for the innovated shield I'm going for the fortified shield um, just because the innovated one had a small crit chance and was it crit chance and severity let me just go back here and check sorry about this guys Yeah, 1% crit chance for 5 seconds and 10% crit severity for 5 seconds. Um, very small amount of time you get for you know that pro and it's only a five it's only a five percent chance. Um, so yeah, that's why I've um, I've gone for the fortified um, because I'd rather have a five percent chance at some temporary hit points then 5% chance for a 1% crit chance increase and 10% severity when your weapons may not even have lock on your enemy um, heavy escort railgun what a beauty of a little weapon this is thank you very much cryptic for giving us this um, this comes from the allied escort packs um, from the Ferocin if you're a Klingon, from the Cation if you're a Fed, and yeah, from the tier 6 Delan if you are a Romulan. And this deals kinetic damage once every 4 seconds with 20% shield penetration, and it hits. It hits. I've had 30k, 40k hits um, before resistances on another player, and yeah it does some damage now I'm only at the moment jumbling around my consoles I've still got my Resol console here my conductive RCS accelerator um, Kabali console and as you can see I'm still using two disruptive vulnerability exploiters and three locators since the last video I've stuck on the bioneural infusion circuits um, because again a bit of extra crit severity it yeah it really sticks it to uh, sticks it to your target now dynamic, pa dynamic power redistributor module I think I had this in the last video but now I have the three-piece bonus from this so the secondary shield projector which as a Klingon um, you get from the same lockbox as your power redistributor module and I also went for the um, the NX um, lobby pack now the reason why I'm running the three piece is simply really it's just to bolster my power redistributor module um, let's take a look down here so two piece will give me an extra 33% cat one disruptor damage. The three piece will reduce by 50% the recharge times of all of the the set pieces there. So that power redistribution module, that 40% cat 2 damage, 
um, increased damage resistance, increased hull healing. Now nah, runs every 90 seconds or so, maybe a little bit less. I'm extremely happy with that. That's um, <laughs> that's a good buff. It's a very good buff. And sorry, Feds, um, you have to you have to shell out for the ship. You have to shell out for the Atlas to get that one. Not that it's cheap for the the Klingons or the Romulans, though. I mean, 20 million, relatively cheap. It, 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 well, it depends if you've got the EC to hand or not. I suppose it's um, cheaps in this game. It is. Uh, it is quite relative. And here we go. Um, nothing too special with the traits. Ablative shell. Um, elusive. I've gone for the superior accurate from the K13 now, just because you know a lot of PVPers swear by accuracy in the game um, as a weapon mod. I think you can get accuracy from other sources, um, and and this is one of them. You know that extra five percent accuracy rating that you get from the superior. It's again, it's not cheap, but it all does add. It all does add up at the end of the day. Um, each few percentage of, uh, of accuracy you get makes a uh, makes a big change when it's when it's all said and done obviously I've got inspirational leader cannon training point-blank shot again nothing out of the ordinary for a cannon escort now what I'm using here is the hit and run from the allied escort where I got my railgun from um, has been nerfed since its release. Um, it's now got a, a time limit cap on it, once every 35 seconds, which <laughs> isn't really that bad, really at all. It's still very, very good. Um, it give you plus 75 damage resistance rating while your evaders and maneuvers is active, and once it expires for 8 seconds, you get 20% all damage bonus and 30% crit severity. So happy with that. Okay, preferential targeting. I got that from the the low B pack from from the from the NX. Um, again, as a Fed, it'll cost you 900 low B. As a Romulan or Clink, it'll cost 450. You won't get the ship, but you will get the trait and the bombardment warhead console. Um, not a huge damage dealer, but it is fun. So just, go, just going back to these, um, the secondary shield projector, um, it's, it is what it is, it's a secondary shield projector every um, every couple of minutes or every minute and a half with the three piece, um, you'll give you yourself um, a hazard, hazard and debuff cleanse, give yourself 12,000 front shields. Um, it says it doesn't state there that I can see um, to your front shields, but it is only your front shields from what I've seen. But it's also to your team, so it's uh, it's quite a handy uh, little team team buff for you there. Now back to the traits. So preferential targeting. While this trait is slotted, activating beam fire at will or cannon scatter volley will cause beam overload and cannon rapid fire to do additional damage right so what I use is I don't use any beams on the back here but I have a beam fire at will 1 and rapid fire 3 yeah, it's not rocket science beam fire at will 1 I get a huge bonus there to my rapid fire and it yeah it hits like a freight train um, again Relatively new addition, energy weapon cycle, um, running emergency power to weapons. Um, it'll give me the, the reduced weapon costs, which is, you know, quite handy to have, and plus the increased cycle haste for energy weapons. And here we go, predictive algorithms, another source of accuracy here. Um, activating a weapon enhancement removes one debuff effect and grants 7.5 accuracy rating for 30 seconds stacks four times so as you can see I have one two three 
weapon um, enhancements there to um, yeah keep the accuracy high okay where were we yeah space reputation so advanced targeting systems I think it's a must precision again quite a must tactical advantage uh, this has changed since the rebalance you no longer do more damage um, the lower your enemy's health goes you now get up to 20 uh, 20 armor penetration um, the lower down your enemy's health goes um, again you know a little bit of um, damage resistance bonus from the advanced tool reinforcement there um, yeah, chop and change that one as I, as I feel necessary it's um, it's good but there are other ones that are just as good and again critical deflection one of the ones from the competitive um, reputation being critically hit will reduce the attackers critical hit chance for a short duration so by 5% for 5 seconds now if you're in a in a high crit um, build and you come and shoot at me a couple of crits and your crit chant is going to go through the floor um, yeah and obviously you know the fewer crits you do the less damage you're going to do the only way a build will get around this is if you run um, damage focused weapons so we weapons with a damage mod or have an extremely high crit chance um, okay I think that's it for now guys um, again as always any suggestions please feel free to comment um, you can find me in game I'm, I'm usually in Karat or you know buzzing around somewhere running around with my fleet running running some fleet events with them um, yeah again feel, feel free to drop me a message tell me where I could improve because that's where I get my enjoyment out of the game it's taking stuff apart fiddling about with it and just having as much fun as I can in the process so Admiral Matt Doody here signing off <laughs>